Taterskin and the Eco Defenders, Book Two, Tell It to Future Generations, Chapter Twenty Two. No, we won't kill them, Albert said. We won't stoop to their level. We will instead make sure they realize the impracticality, let's call it, of continuing with their vile experiments. So, we want to advertise this thing, so to speak, so that people will know what will happen if they pursue the same sort of viciousness, Alexis said. I have an idea about that. Let's give this operation a name and tip off a photographer we can trust to get some publicity pictures of us that he or she can use as soon as the story breaks. I don't think any of us realized before then that Alexis was not only a gifted linguist and an all-around bird brainiac, but also a savvy publicity agent. But at the same time, it probably didn't exactly shock any of us either. I wondered how it was that she could pack so much know-how into that walnut-sized brain of hers. But then again, I had never seen her brain. I was guessing its size based on the proportions of her cranium. What name are you thinking of giving it, Alexis? I asked. The Million Paw March. We will recruit a quarter of a million of our fellow creatures. Naturally, they must be small ones, so that they can all fit into the torture chamber. Torture chamber? Ravel asked. Okay, laboratory, Alexis said, or experimentation station. We will recruit squirrels, raccoons, opossums, as well as rabbits, chipmunks, and so forth. We can all start spreading the news and have them spread the news of our plans among their extended families and meadow mates. Thus, we will easily amass that many furry friends. How will they get in? Robet asked Alexis. Some of us would have no problem simply opening the door. Even if it's locked, Marmalade wondered. Sure. Either one of the elephants could grab the doorknob with their trunk and give it a yank. As could Uga, although he would grab it with his prehensile upper limb, says he has no trunk. Prehensile upper limbs? Rinky asked. Arms, Alexis clarified. I think it's better for Uga to do it by night. Even under the cover of darkness, the elephants might be seen under the street lamps, or heard as the sound of their sauntering is not exactly akin to the pitter-patter of tiny feet. Tub Thumper took umbrage at that because she considered herself to be adequately adept at sneaking up on people. She didn't express any objection, though, fearing that if she did, it would lead to allusions to how the earth shook a little when she walked. And what about the photo op? What are you picturing, no pun intended, along those lines? Albert asked. Again, the CM come to the fore. They will garner the most attention. They have the it factor. What's the it factor? Marmalade asked. It is what it is, Alexis inexplicably replied. What is what it is? I mean, what is what what is? Cried Yuck Yuck. That makes no sense. It's inexplicable, my dear hyena. Some animals have it. It and others like you don't. Sorry. Hey, what about me? The pterodactyl said. You wouldn't leave the most beautiful flying lizard that exists in all time and space off our publicity shot, would you? Tell me that you won't rob me of my promised 15 minutes of fame. Don't worry, Terry. You will get way more than the predicted quarter hour of fame. And yes, you have a striking enough visage that you, along with the CMs, should indeed be featured in the publicity shot. Truth be told, we will all be in it, but only certain ones will be featured. In other words, some of us will be in front, in the limelight, while others are behind, as if photobombing the rest of us. Us? You mean you are nominating yourself to be among those featured? Rinky asked. Well, Albert will, as always, be at the forefront. And don't I perch on his shoulder during these operations of ours? I will just happen to be there, organically, Alexis explained. 
We weren't so sure about her reasoning, but I think we all recognized that Alexa should indeed be among those receiving the focus of attention, no pun intended. With her talents, intelligence, and expertise, she made Shelley Skylark look like a common barnyard chicken. Alexis continued, So this is how I see the picture. With the torture chamber, or a laboratory, in the background, it will be, from left to right, Albert and myself, Uga, Chapui, Tub Thumper and Chumbawamba, Ravel X, Stripes, with marmalade on his back, peeking cutely over the top of his head, Ocero, Jowls, Rory, and Jupitus. Yuck Yuck will stand behind, and because they are short or small, Draco, Rinky, and the dogs will be in front of us, but near the bottom of the picture. Who are you calling short or small, I said. You're not exactly a giant, Alexis. What, do you want to stand on Albert's shoulder, too? Was the parrot's response to that? I just groaned and shook my head. Oh, well, I figured it didn't matter much. I realized that we dogs were the most commonplace of us animals. All of the others were exotic to one degree or another, but there were dogs everywhere. None like my pups, though, I thought. But maybe every parent feels that way about their children. Hey, what about me? You said I would be featured, Terry complained. Oh, yes, and Terry will come swooping across the frame as the photographer snaps our group portrait. All were more or less satisfied with its arrangement, except for Yuck Yuck, who had a place by herself behind those with the it factor. When the photo was taken later that day, after the photographer had agreed to keep our presence in Hartford secret until the next day, at which point he could print it in the newspaper to accompany a story that we assured him would be written about us. It appeared as if Yuck Yuck was indeed photobombing the group. In the picture, she was lifting her head as high as she could, smirking in her cringe-inducing way, and making sure she was seen above Chapawee. Terry also looked kind of goofy in her flyby, as she tried to display a beguiling grin. Flying lizards should not try to smile. It doesn't become them. 